right, so we are underway or almost underway a few minutes from starting day two for the week at Hustler Casino. Today the game is 5-5-100 five, five, with an ante. Yeah, yesterday didn't go super well. That was the last vlog. Hopefully today I can play a little better and run a little better. And uh, usually that results in a win. Let's see what happens. And like I've been saying, I'm gonna recap my uh, 2022 poker results after today's session, because I think it's the last time I'm playing this year. So stay tuned for that. I'll talk to you guys from right here in uh, five or six hours. Let's go. Alright guys, back at it again for the last time in 2022. Today we're playing 5-5 five five with a $100 Annie. I sit down with $100,000 today, switching it up a bit as opposed to the usual $50,000. And here we go, in the first interesting hand, Veins opens from early position to $300. Rainbow Kitty calls in the cutoff and I look down at King-10 offsuit in the big blind. Almost always, I think just calling is standard, but once in a blue moon, re-raising seems okay to me. So that's what I decide to do this time. 2300 to go. Veins things for a little while and calls. Rainbow Katie gets out of the way. So heads up out of position to a flop that I completely miss. Queen 8-3 with two clubs. Despite missing, I could still have a lot of strong hands though. So I decide to continue for $1,500. And Veins makes the call. This makes it so he's got a little over a pot-sized bet remaining, around $10,000 or so, and the pot is 8K. Turn card is the Six of Hearts, and so far, given the way the hand's gone down, I think I could easily have some strong hands like Ace-Queen, Pocket Queens, Over Pairs, maybe even the Nut Flush Draw once in a while, so... Even though shutting it down seems fair, I think we could put him in a tough spot with all sorts of single pair holdings, lower than the queen, and even occasionally he might be a little bit worried about being out kicked with maybe queen jack or queen 10 suited, for example, if he's got a hand like that. So I decide to start the night off with some fireworks and pure aggression by ripping it all in for $10,000 effective. Like I said, hoping this makes life difficult for veins with a single pair holding. In fact, it does not though. He calls right away. As you guys can see, he's got middle pair and a flush draw, which in my opinion is still kind of a dicey situation, but apparently Veins has a lot of heart or maybe just a read on me because it took him all of one second to make the call. That's not good news for me, but still we've got some outs. Unfortunately, they don't arrive as the deuce of spades comes on the river and we start off the day with a pretty tough loss. Time to turn things around and what better hand to do that with than ace king. There's a limp for $5 from Nick. I raise it up to 300. Veins calls on my left, and then Brown Balla in the small blind squeezes to 2,000. When the action gets back to me, if I'm gonna be re-raising with hands like King-10 offsuit, you better believe I'll be doing it with very strong hands as well. And Ace-King definitely qualifies, so I make it $5,000 to go. Veins folds, but Brown Balla calls. So we're gonna go heads up in position. As you guys can see, I'm in some serious trouble once again as he's trapping with pocket aces and even more trouble when the flop comes down king high. King, queen, four, rainbow. He checks, seems like a good board to me. I'd be betting with all sorts of stuff. So if I have a king, I'll be doing it as well. 3,000 to go. Brown Balla calls and little did I know that I need some help here and somehow it arrives. The king of clubs on the turn, giving me the best hand in a situation where I was in some serious, serious trouble. Brown Bala, of course, has no way of knowing this, and instead he decides to lead out for $3,000. Not really sure what's up with this, but doesn't seem like a very strong hand to me, and I would sometimes try to pounce on this with perhaps a hand like Ace-Jack or Ace-10 suited, maybe Ace-Four suited once in a while. So with Ace-King, let's try to get some value and raise it up as well. 10,000 to go. After some thought, Brown Balla calls. So we've got a pretty big pot here going to the river, which is not great. It's the four of diamonds. So now we're chopping with any king if he did have a hand like King-Jack suited, for example. But when he checks, doesn't change my plan. I'm going to shove all in. Once again, he's got around a pot-sized river bet remaining. So that's what I do. And as you guys can see, Brown Bala is now in a very painful situation. 
doesn't seem to like it whatsoever. But it's also tough to fold pocket aces in this spot. You know, he makes it less likely that I've got ace king. It seems less likely that I would be bluffing with ace jack or ace 10 as well, though. So I don't blame him for uh, not being in love with the situation. But after a long and deliberate thought out process, he decides to fold, which is, in my opinion, an amazing fold. Nice hand, brown baller. Let's move on to this next one where I upgrade from ace king to pocket aces. However, not a ton of pre-flop action in this one. Wesley makes it 300. I make it 1200, a few players on his left, and he makes the call. So we go heads up to a flop of king, queen, three, all spades. Not the best board for pocket aces, but I'm still gonna continue betting a thousand to go. Wesley calls and we see the 10 of clubs on the turn. He checks again, and I think you could go either way here between continuing to bet or checking back. With a hand like red aces on a board like this, I think it's better to just check back and see if he wants to bluff the river, value bet a worse hand, or maybe exercise some pot control if we are beat already. So that's what I do. And we got a pretty lame river, the four of spades. Wesley checks again. Now uh, I'm just going to check it back. My hand could often win at showdown, but... Definitely not strong enough to value bet. Unfortunately, this time we're losing against pocket eights with a spade. Later on, this one goes down where Rainbow Kitty opens to $300. Tal calls in between, and I'm looking down at ace five suited in late position. Better candidate than others to uh, re-raise with, so that's what I do, 1,500 to go. And what do you know, we get three callers, including Brown Balla in the big blind, Rainbow Kitty, the original raiser, and Tall. So four of us going to a flop which is not bad, ace, 10, four with two diamonds. So we've got top pair, not much else aside from that though. When the action checks to me, I continue with a bet of around half pot, $3,000. Plenty of draws and maybe some other floatable hands that we can get value from. So that's what I do and only Rainbow Kitty calls. Turn card is good, it's the four of spades. He checks it over to me and uh, I think he could very likely have a hand like a flush draw or perhaps king queen or king jack that was drawing to a straight so instead of continuing to bet for value which i think is more than okay i decide to switch gears and check it back hoping to induce a bluff from rainbow kitty who uh based on my previous day's experience with him was keen to bluffing whenever he missed so that's what i do but unfortunately the eight of diamonds comes on the river which of course is the drawback to quote unquote slow playing However, Rainbow Kitty checks it again. At this point, I definitely am not going to try to get some value, so I check it back. And sure enough, we were up against the old Queen Nine of Diamonds, so this one's not going our way either. The very next shuffle, this one goes down where Rainbow Kitty makes it 300, and this time it's Tal who kicks it up to 1500. I'm next to act with pocket fives, and generally, cold calling with medium strength pocket pairs is not advisable, especially if the pre flop original razor is likely to re-squeeze, which would obviously force my hand out, but Rainbow Kitty doesn't seem the type, so I decide to gamble a bit and toss in the money. Maybe we could flop a set. Rainbow Kitty does call as well, so we're going three ways to a flop, which is a good one. Queen, seven, five, two clubs, so we've got bottom set on a draw heavy board, otherwise known as the dream. Rainbow Kitty checks, Tall continues with a bet of $2,500, and I decide to raise right away. Calling seems okay too, but considering that I'd be raising draws sometimes, let's do it with sets as well. Make it 7,500 to go. Rainbow Kitty gets out of the way, but Tall's got the nut flush draw. He's not going anywhere. Turn card is the best card in the deck. The queen of clubs, giving Tal the nut flush and me a full house, of course. Tal checks, I bet $8,500 this time, trying to keep him in with all possible over pairs maybe just trip queens, and of course, flushes. I'm not expecting to uh, fold at any point. He makes the call, and we're off to a river, which is the nine of spades. A good one, it doesn't double pair the board or bring in another club, and I don't see any reason why we would not be able to get the money at this point. Pot is $36,000, Tal's got 18,000 left, so right around half pot, and after he checks, there's nothing for me to do but move all in. Tal does not snap call, which obviously is not great, but he also doesn't seem to want to fold, which of course was the plan all along. But somehow, after about five minutes of thinking, Tal lets it go, which is just an incredible fold. 
honestly, it's a little bit insulting towards me, a little bit embarrassing, but got to give credit where it's due. Tal read me like a book. And once again, someone makes a hero fold against me today, which could have turned things around quite a bit if they hadn't. But like I said, credit where it's due. Amazing play by Tal. And we don't get the maximum, which I think we definitely should have against the nut flush. Next, this hand goes down where the $200 straddle is on. Rainbow Kitty makes it 500. Tal calls and I have pocket queens on the button. That means it's time to raise the price. 2,500 to go. And what do you know, they both make the call. Three ways in position to a board of 10, 9, 6, all clubs. I have no clubs, so just an overpair on a board like this. Multi-way is definitely not the strongest hand, even though it is an overpair. When the action gets to me, I decide to check it back, and we see the deuce of spades on the turn. Action checks to me once again, and yet again, I decide to set the trap and exercise some pot control. Would not be surprised if either of these guys are checking strong hands over twice in hopes of going for a check raise. And I don't know, something just felt a little bit weird in this one, so check back again. And the river's decent, nine of spades, meaning it's less likely these guys flop two pair. And uh, who knows, if we're up against a hand like 10-6 suited, now we got there. But anyway, Rainbow Kitty checks, Tal checks again. Both these guys have checked it all the way to me on every single street. Now it definitely seems like I've got the best hand, so I decide to bet right around the size of the pot. $7,500, Rainbow Kitty calls right away, Tal folds. I'm expecting this to be good news, so I turn over my queens quite confidently. What do I know as he turns over a flopped flush? Luckily, he didn't check raise the river. Would have been a nasty spot. But uh, yeah, this one's also not going the right direction. Our queens have been cracked. A little while later, this one goes down where the straddle is on yet again. Brown Bala opens to 500. Francisco calls and then Rainbow Kitty squeezes on the button. Action gets to me in the straddle. And what do you know? I've got ace queen. Pretty powerful cards, especially against the re-raise from a player who's quite capable of doing that with subpar holdings like you guys can see here queen 10 so i decide to make it six thousand dollars for value brown baller gets out of the way francisco however makes the call rainbow kitty gets out of the way as well so two of us going to a flop although it's not the anticipated opponent either way we go to a board of jack nine four with two spades Yet again, not much going on for me on this flop. Aside from the pocket fives, it feels like I haven't really been connecting too well today, but that's not going to stop me. I could certainly have aces, kings, queens, pocket jacks, ace, jack, and occasional nut flush draws to uh, also add to the firepower. So I decided to continue with a small bet, just like I would with those holdings, hoping this folds out any sort of pocket pair that didn't connect. However, Francisco is not interested in folding. He makes the call, and righteously so, as you guys can see, he's flopped top set. Of course, I didn't expect that after the way he played his hand pre-flop. Turn card is the three of hearts, and against a player like Francisco, and with a hand like ace, queen, I don't think continuing to blast makes a ton of sense. So. I wave the white flag essentially and check it. He checks it back and we see the seven of diamonds on the river. At this point, we're only beating missed draws, but if I'm being honest, he most likely would have started bluffing with those on the turn. So I'm not falling for whatever shenanigans Francisco is up to. I check it once again. He does not, of course. He bets $23,000 a pot sized bet. And I could have many better hands to call with than ace high in this situation. So I don't think about it too long and let it go, but not before losing around $10,000 in this particular hand. And the next interesting one, action gets to me on the button with queen 10 suited. Make it 500 to go as the straddle was on. Small blind calls, big blind calls, and then brown ball of squeezes in the straddle to 3,800. I think queen 10 suited against a straddle re-raise is always a call on the button. So uh, pretty standard continue here from me. Other two players fold and we go heads up to an okay flop, queen jack four. So I've got top pair. Of course, we're still dominated by over pairs or the occasional top pair with a better kicker. But where am I going to go? After he bets $7,000, I flop top pair. So I call once again. And we see an interesting turn card, the six of spades. This time Brown Bala checks, and now we have a question between checking back or betting small. And I think betting small is a little bit better. We can protect our equity against hands like ace king with a spade, ace 10 with a spade, maybe ace jack with a spade, pocket tens with a spade. You guys get the idea. There's all sorts of hands that we're beating, but not by much. 
So we do benefit from betting small and getting those hands to fold, I believe. Don't want to go too big here, though. So I bet $6,500, right around a quarter the size of the pot. Brumbala makes the call, which is not looking great for me, although, like I said, we are still beating some hands. River is the seven of clubs. He checks again. Don't really see us getting called by a worse hand now, so I check back. And unfortunately, we are losing to a better queen as he turns over ace queen of clubs. <sighs> this one was also quite frustrating. Seems like the stars are lining up today for us to lose some money, but we're going to try to combat that and get things going the right way again. Perhaps we could do that with ace queen in this next hand. I raise it up to 500 and only veins calls on my left. Heads up to a flop in which we finally connect well. Queen 10 5 with two hearts. I've got top pair, top kicker, so of course I continue betting. And he makes the call. Turn card is the four of clubs. And now I'm going to continue betting. Still plenty of worse hands to get value from, including weaker top pairs, middle pair, and of course, all available draws. This time I size up to $3,300, trying to charge as much as I can. And I'm happy to see he makes the call again. So quite a big pot brewing now. Hoping for a clean river, but that's not what we get. The four of hearts bringing in the front door flush. Not ideal, but I still think there are plenty of worse hands he could have, like king, queen, Queen Jack, really any queen that's weaker than mine. And of course, perhaps a non-believing 10 and such. So with a pot around $10,000, I decide instead of checking to bet around half pot and fold if he raises. So that's what I do. I put in a bet of $4,800. And he calls right away. Seems like a decent result to me, but when I turn over my hand, Veins has the nut flush. Luckily, he didn't raise and put us to the test, but still unfortunate to lose yet another pot. And with that, we come to the last hand of the night. In this one, Wesley opens to 500, and I'm in middle position with King-10 offsuit. Against an early position open, I think the play is to either fold or re-raise a hand like this. Don't really want to call and play multi-way, or even worse, get squeezed from someone behind. So I decide to make it $2,000 to go. Francisco cold calls in the straddle, and then Wesley calls as well. So three of us going to a flop, at least we're in position. And what do you know, we finally get something good. 10 6 3 rainbow so a measly top pair is about the best i could hope for today action checks to me i decide to continue with a small bet of 2200 francisco calls wesley does not turn card is the deuce of clubs shouldn't really change anything unless uh francisco's got a hand like 5 4 suited but i don't know if he would cold call pre-flop with a hand like that Maybe he would. Who knows what Francisco's up to these days. But either way, I'm deciding whether or not I'm going to continue betting. But I won't have the chance because Francisco leads out on this card for $4,000. Like I said, who knows what this man is up to these days. Pretty interesting play, but all I know is it doesn't seem too strong to me. I don't see him having any two-pair combinations on a board like this. So unless he's playing a set or an overpair in this fashion... We should still have the best hand, and I don't think he would play a set or an overpair like this. So I decide most likely he's got a draw of some sort, perhaps even a week or 10 that is trying to set his own price, and I'm having none of it, especially at this point where I'm desperate for some value. I raise it up right now. $14,000 to go. An additional 10 k is what it's going to cost him if he wants to see the river. If he jams all in at this point... I'm going to throw up, probably not really sure what I would do against that play, which was something I was considering in this moment. But after some thought, Francisco decides on just a call, hoping for a clean river. And that's not exactly what we get. The four of diamonds. Sure, it doesn't introduce too many straights, but if you did have a hand that contained a five, of course, now we're losing to that as well. So holding my breath now, Francisco does not check right away. Instead, he thinks for quite a while and of course, now we can see as he's got eight high, he's contemplating leading out yet again as a bluff. Maybe $40,000 might get it done is what I imagine he's thinking. But instead, he shuts it down and checks it over to me. Not sure if we're getting called by a worse hand yet again. Maybe could go for some value against a week or 10, but it seems mighty thin at this point, especially for a pot that's nearly $40,000. So I decided to just check it back. And Francisco announces nothing. So finally, we win a decent sized pot, profiting around 20,000 in this hand. Still not quite enough to get me out of the hole though, but that's okay. There's more poker to be played after the stream. As you guys know, I'm usually a fan of doing that. So stay tuned for how this session went. As always, I hope you all enjoyed the hands.
All right, here we are once again. The aftermath of a Hustler live stream. I ended up playing shorthanded for like three hours, maybe not so long, two hours after the uh, the stream ended. But uh, nothing really went my way. Also didn't go terribly. Bottom line, I ended up losing around $15,000 today. You guys will see the results right here, like always. But uh, yeah, kind of a frustrating day. I made a bunch of hands and uh, people made like crazy hero folds against me. That's never fun. It happened three times today. It's so weird. Getting paid off is not something I really have a problem with. So today was weird. And uh, also I lost some decent sized pots in other situations. So uh, yeah, not exactly the best day ever, but luckily managed to get out with a reasonable size loss. Obviously still a lot of money, but you know, given the stakes of the game, not a ton. I'm exhausted. I'm gonna get home and get some sleep. And uh, after doing some accounting, I will come back with uh, the 2022 poker results that I've been talking about. Let me fast forward like a day or two and uh, we'll close this video out. All right, so here we are back at the apartment. It's been a few days since that session. And as promised, we are gonna go over some numbers. So without any further ado, here are the stats for my poker year. I played a total of 148 sessions, totaling just over 1,000 hours. My goal for uh, every year that I play is at least 1,000 hours, although I'd like to play a bit more. However, when you're playing, games are, are a little bit bigger. It's hard to find them super often. You can't just walk into a casino and expect to jump into a 5,100 game. So I'm okay with that amount of hours. And the grand total is $544,815 profited in the year. Of course, my best year ever. If you guys have been following along uh, or if you're new, welcome, but by far my best year ever. The year before was significantly less than this. And the year before that I made like pretty much minimum wage. So yeah, obviously very happy with these results, but um, I think it's worth noting that dollar amounts can be a little bit misleading because what really matters more is actually big blinds without getting too nerdy if someone plays one two no limit and they make 400k a year and if someone plays 1000 2000 and they make 500k a year even though the second player made more money the first player obviously had a much better year so yeah, I think big blinds are a better metric when it comes to this kind of stuff. Here are some graphs. This is my cash game yearly graph thingy. This shows uh, dollars won, dollars lost over the last 12 months. But like I've been saying, big blinds are usually a better way to look at this stuff. As you guys can see, this graph is a little bit steadier. And that's just because it, like I said, shows your big blinds, which isn't going to account for uh, when you're running really good or really bad in a giant game. All it cares about is how many big blinds you're winning. And uh, yeah, that's what you guys should be focusing on. But yeah, that's how my year went. Obviously, it was awesome. This was the first year that I played big games and luckily it worked out. I don't know if I'll be able to duplicate or even exceed these results next year. It's a bit of a high bar. I think I ran really well this year and it's reflected in these results. And if I'm being totally honest, I'm not really super thrilled about the way I played this year. Yeah, things went well. Results were obviously good, but I think I could have played better and there's plenty of room for improvement. So in terms of 2023, the plan is to try to get better at poker, try to play a little bit more if I can and hopefully everything else falls into place. Not to mention bringing you guys along for the ride, of course, as I don't plan on stopping this YouTube channel anytime soon. It's just been so much fun to uh, not only be a poker player, I feel like there's not a lot of fulfillment in that, at least for me personally. This YouTube channel is certainly an outlet for me to sort of vent to you guys and express some creativity, etc. Yeah not stopping anytime soon. So thank you guys for an awesome year. Thank you for all the support. Seriously, it makes a world of difference to me. 
And hopefully you guys enjoy the videos this year. Cheers to next year's. It's gonna be a fun ride and I'll see you guys then. Until then, good luck at the tables. Peace.